Hey guys, how's it going? Lewis Harding Invest here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going through three US stocks to buy now in 2021. I'll be going through the first two picks and then Andrea and Jamie will be going through the last pick. Let's get straight into it. So stock pick number one is Coca-Cola Femza, ticker symbol KOF. These guys are a Mexican multinational beverage company headquartered in Mexico. Um, Femza and Coca-Cola Company own the majority of the stock, with the rest of them being listed on the Mexican Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. Basically, it's the largest Coca-Cola franchise bottler in the world. They have operations in Latin America and Mexico. Now let's have a look at my analysis checklist for Coca-Cola Femza. So, Pillar 1 is quite an interesting reading, so the, the margins are quite there, above 10%, they're around 5-10%, to 10%, um, and they do stay at a pretty steady level to be fair. They don't quite hit the margins that I would like to see in the company, however, they are very consistent, and this is probably more important. If they can, can keep consistent margins, say 7%, 8%, over the long term, it's pretty decent really. Companies like Amazon and Walmart have like 2%, so some business models are a lot different. Um, lower return equity, this is usually for the prime best companies, but what I do like about this business is there isn't too much debt, so not much long term debt and quite a lot of liquidity in the business. Moving on to pillar three, and the revenue growth is pretty stagnant. Uh, Coca Cola, the actual Coca Cola company, Pretty stagnant revenue um, and there's not really much growth for that business, hence why this business isn't growing that much either. Um, but free cash flow profit has been growing, which is all very good, uh, as well as returned earnings growth. And then decreasing share count, it hasn't been decreasing the share count, I think it's been pretty steady to be honest. Um, but what's really, really good about this stock is consistent dividend growth and previous acquisitions with. Coca-Cola Femmes are acquiring various different bottle, Coca-Cola bottlers around the world. Um, and then yeah, the PE ratio and the price to free cash flow ratio make for good reading as well. So for an entry price of, of a, for a 10% return, I'm looking at a $49 range and with the current price at $57, it's not too far away really, it doesn't have to drop too much to get to my price target. Now onto the DCF valuation and you can see it's looking pretty good for KOF. Uh, for a 10% return I'm looking at around $49 per share um, and this is with free cash flow pretty reasonable, very conservative compared to previous years. Um, these have all come from analyst estimates um, and I've obviously sent checked them and being on the more conservative side is always more important as an investor. Uh, but yeah, it makes for good reading. I'm pretty excited about KOF. Um, I actually own them in my portfolio. One of the reasons I bought them is because I wanted exposure to Coca-Cola. I personally think Coca-Cola KO is overvalued right now, um, quite significantly. And by owning KOF, I get really good exposure to the Coca-Cola brand via their bottling franchise. It's a very, very consistent company. Coca-Cola isn't going anywhere. And these guys give you great exposure to Coca-Cola at a more reasonable valuation. What's also interesting is these guys are in Latin America and Mexico, so emerging markets. And you would expect that Coca-Cola will probably do better in emerging markets than the current developed world. So it makes interesting reading. They're very profitable um, in terms of they're very consistent. Um, and that's one thing which has drew me to Coca-Cola Femza, so interesting stuff really. Um, and I think it's everyone should really have a look at this and make their own judgement of course, but it makes for good reading really. So on to stock number two and it is Discovery. So Discovery Inc, um, ticker symbols D-I-S-K-A, um, B and K. Um, there's three different shares listed on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. So yeah, essentially Discovery is an American mass media factual television company based in New York City. They have all sorts of different brands such as Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, Science Channel, TLC and even Eurosport as well. So they have a, a, a vast range of different media networks out there. One major thing to note with Discovery Inc is that back in May 2021, AT&T announced that it pr had proposed a merger between Discovery Inc and Morda Media. And it would mean Morda Media would be spun out into a brand new publicly traded company with Discovery to be known as Warner Bros Discovery. Uh, this transaction is subject to regulation and shareholder approval, but it's an important point to note when looking into this stock. 
Now let's have a look at the analysis checklist for Discovery Inc. And it makes a decent reading once again. So the net profit margins are above 10%, which is always lovely to see. Media companies, you do usually expect this to be fair. Uh, return on equity doesn't hit the mark, but the current ratio does, which is good. One point to note is the long term debt to equity is over 50%, and this is a little bit of a concern. Discovery have taken on a bit of debt in the past couple of years to make some acquisitions. But what's interesting is they produce a lot of cash flow, so I'm expecting this debt to be reduced by a hell of a lot in the coming years. So it's not too much of a worry because they're going to get rid of it. And we've even said in you know shareholder calls that that is their plan of action. Pillar three, everything is looking pretty decent apart from dividend growth. They don't pay a dividend, so everything else is a yes. Revenue growth, cash flow growth, profit growth, return earnings growth, always great to see. Decrease in share counts of the buying back shares, which is always great. Then the acquisitions they have made as well in the media space have been fantastic. And I actually think the Warner Media transaction is a really, really good deal for Discovery shareholders. I think these media assets are few and far between. The likes of Disney, Netflix, Comcast. You look further than that, there's not many. So this transaction will make a giant media powerhouse and Discovery will be part of that. Um, the PE ratio is very low, um, at around 13, and I don't know why the price free cash flow is so um, different, but anyway, sometimes these things do happen, but the price is looking very good right now for Discovery. Um, for a 10% return, you're looking at $71, and with the share price currently at nearly 27 it makes quite interesting reading and this is one thing which attracted me to this stock in the first place. Now let's have a look at the DCF valuation for Discovery and for a required rate of return of 10% I'm looking at a fair value of the company at $71 per share and um, the free cash flow is going to be pretty consistent over the coming years in my, in my opinion and yeah I personally think that the stock is trading very cheap compared to its fair value um, and then with the Warner, Warner Media transaction I think Discovery shareholders are getting a very very good deal there um, so we will have to see how it all turns out, but Discovery is looking like a very, very undervalued pick. I do know that Michael Burry has owned Discovery over the past year, so it's always nice to see when fellow famous investors are investing in these kind of stocks. Now let me pass you over to Andre and Jamie from Stocks and Savings, who are going to take you through their stock pick. Hey Lewis, thanks for having us on your channel, where we'll be bringing you one of our top stock picks for 2021. Our stock pick for 2021 is Zillow, an American online real estate marketplace similar to the likes of Rightmove in the UK. Zillow has got three main segments. The first one is IMT, that stands for Internet Media and Technology, and it's an online search engine similar to Rightmove. There you can search for properties to buy and sell or they want to rent. It also includes Premier Agent, which helps realtors find clients to help buy and sell houses. The second segment is their home segment, which is essentially a house flipping service. This means that they search for houses to buy, they do a little bit of work on them, and then they sell it on for a higher price. This is all done in a relatively short space of time as well. The third and final segment is their mortgages segment, which is basically what it says on the tin. <laughs> they just have their own mortgage offerings that they give to customers. So we said earlier that Zillow was kind of like right move, but I think it's like right move, but one or two or three steps ahead. Mm. The reason we like Zillow so much is because it's not just resting on its previously successful IMT segment. It's looking to build an entire ecosystem that incorporates a whole journey of buying, selling, renting and living in a home. If you've ever bought a house, you'll know how fragmented the process is and how many different people you have to go through. But now imagine if you could do all that through one platform. That's essentially what Zillow is trying to be. Now, their home segment is currently not particularly profitable, which is what's hurting their financials a bit, but this home segment is crucial to creating this ecosystem. Because Zillow are looking to buy the homes for cash, firstly, this makes it a lot easier for sellers to just sell their home to Zillow and not have to worry about the chain. And then similarly, because Zillow own the house, it's a lot easier for buyers because they don't have to worry about the sellers or any other chain. And Zillow also can keep everything internal. So you don't have to go to all these different parties that get involved when you're trying to buy and sell a house. In fact, they've made the process of selling your house even easier. Now, Zillow started up with something called Zestimates, which meant that you had an instant estimate for your house and houses around you. And 
they've managed to acquire a lot of data for that. Now they're leveraging Zestimates to put in immediate cash offers for houses, meaning that you could effectively sell your house for a known price at the click of a button, which is wow. crazy. Another thing that we look for when investing in the company is founder CEOs. This is because research shows that founder-led companies perform better than non-founder-led ones. Now, we've done some research on the founder and CEO of Zillow, Rich Barton, and it turns out that this guy is a bit of a serial entrepreneur. He also founded Expedia and Glassdoor. And when I did that research, I also found out that Expedia is a Microsoft spin-off, which is pretty oh, impressive. I had no I idea. Know. But yeah, it, it is quite impressive because when you think of Zillow, Expedia and Glassdoor, they're all very different industries. But they're all really good companies and really useful companies as well, and ones that we both use. Mm, well, yeah. not Zillow because we're not in America, but you get the chance. <laughs> but we would. We would. <laughs> if it was here. Take notes, right move. <laughs> now, another thing that we look at when we look at a company's leadership team is that they have some skin in the game. What do we mean by that? That they have some form of ownership in the company such that they would benefit from the growth of the company. Indeed, this is the case with Rich Barton, who owns 4% of Zillow, which is pretty reassuring. Now, Zillow recently released some Q2 results, and if you're interested in this, you can check out the video that I made on that. But we can go over a couple of the headline numbers here. In terms of revenue, they had a record-breaking quarter with $1.3 billion worth of revenue. But that's not the half of it, because they have guided next quarter that they will have their first two billion dollar revenue quarter wow, so i mean the fact that 1.3 billion is a record now that's shooting up to two billion i mean that is insane mm. in terms of margins obviously this has been impacted by the home segment being such a big chunk of revenue because that is really low margin and it's been fairly negative margins when you look at adjusted ebitda for it so it's no surprise that the margins haven't been as good as they were over the last year or two. But in Q2 last year, the adjusted EBITDA margin for the home segment was around minus 13.4%. It's been gradually improving since then and is now just minus 3.7%. So that is a trend that's going in the right direction. And if they're going to hit $2 billion worth of revenue, you'd like to think that the more houses they're flipping, the more those adjusted EBITDA margins are going to be improving. And slowly but surely, they're building a machine that you'd like to think, and to be honest, it looks like it will, lead to solid profitability. Now, from everything you've heard so far, you probably expect it to have an insane valuation like any other growth stock, right? Well, no. <laughs> if we look at its valuation from Simply Wall Street, we can see that currently, it's actually 24.5% undervalued and it's down 50% from its all-time high, which is insane. It does feel like Wall Street is kind of punishing Zillow, right? <laughs> I think there's certainly stocks out there where you can see people getting really enthusiastic and carried away with the enthusiastic momentum. Well, Zillow right now seems to be the opposite and that people are getting carried away with a negative momentum towards it. So there you have it, one of our top stock picks for 2021. Thanks Lewis again for collaborating with us and don't forget to check the video on our channel for another two top stock picks. A massive thank you to Andrea and Jamie. Thank you very much for coming onto the channel and going through Zillow today. Um, please go over to their channel and subscribe and then watch the video to go through the other two stock picks. If you enjoyed today's video why don't you subscribe to my weekly newsletter The Harding Herald. This newsletter is full of jam-packed action and it summarises the past week in the world of investing and finance. Um, I'll give you the top five stories and then I'll give you a bit of a summary of my week. Um, so yeah, please subscribe to that and the link is down below. As always, if you are new around here, please subscribe to my Patreon. Um, this is a place where you can get direct access to me, my stock picks, what investments I'm looking at, and you get access to a full Discord private community for only £5 per month. So please subscribe to me on Patreon and become a member today. As always, please leave a like and a comment in the video as it really does help me out. And subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. As always, it would be amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. However, you can check out some of these videos.